Hi, I'm Ryan Keller with Pate Group. Today I'm going to be giving an overview of how to use the migration tools that Microsoft has made available to move your organization's videos out of the stream video portal and into SharePoint. As you may have heard, the stream video portal, which Microsoft has taken to calling Stream Classic, is being phased out. Instead, you can upload your videos directly into SharePoint and treat them like any other file type, like a Word document, or an image file, or a PDF. This makes working with and managing your videos much easier since they're integrated directly into SharePoint and not residing in a separate video portal. Now, what about the videos that are still in the old stream? As part of the migration process, Microsoft has provided a set of tools to help move your organization's videos from Stream Classic into SharePoint, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at now. The first tool is a PowerShell script that will analyze Stream Classic and export a list of the videos it finds as a CSV file. The second component is a sample Power BI dashboard that you can use to more easily analyze the results you get in the CSV file. And finally, we'll have the actual migration tool that copies the videos from Stream Classic into SharePoint. When migrating your organization's videos from the Stream Classic portal to your SharePoint site, there are lots of options and scenarios to consider, like notifying your users and developing a migration strategy. We're not going to get into any of that today. Instead, we're just going to look at these tools and how they work. If you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about your options with a Stream migration, be sure to visit us at pategroup.com and we'd be happy to work with you on developing a migration plan. Again, this is meant to be more of an overview of how to use these tools rather than a discussion on a comprehensive migration strategy. First, let's take a look at the PowerShell script. This is a script provided by Microsoft that you can use to get a breakdown of the video stored in Stream Classic. This is technically an optional step in the migration process, but if you aren't sure what your organization's video situation looks like, it's probably a good idea to run this script. It's also arguably the most difficult part of the process too, but we'll walk through all the steps needed to run the script and generate your report. In addition to the script itself, we'll also need two other pieces of information, your Microsoft 365 tenant ID and a token to pass to the script to allow it to access the stream content. Let's get the script. Log in to your Microsoft 365 Admin Center, then click on All Admin Centers, and finally, click on Stream. On the left-hand side, click Stream Migrations, Reports, and finally, click the Download Script button. You'll probably want to copy it to a place on your desktop that's easy to get to from a command line. In my case, I have a folder I made called Stream on my C drive, so I'll just save it there. The next thing we need to find is the tenant ID. This is a unique ID number for your Microsoft 365 tenant. You can get this from the Microsoft Entra Admin Center, formerly known as Azure Active Directory. So head back to your Microsoft 365 Admin Center home, click All Admin Centers, and then click on Microsoft Entra. If your portal doesn't load up the Overview dashboard by default, click the Overview link on the left. Your tenant ID is listed there. Copy this ID and paste it somewhere that you can get to later, like in Notepad. Finally, we'll need to grab a token to pass into the script that will allow the script to access your stream content to generate the report. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole process, but I'll try to make it easy to see what you need to do. With your browser open, you'll want to open your developer tools. Pressing F12 should open that on all browsers. With your dev tools open, navigate to your Stream Classic portal. You can get there by opening Stream from the waffle menu, then clicking the Stream Classic link, or by going directly to web.microsoftstream.com. Once you have the Stream Classic homepage loaded up, switch back to your developer tools and click on the Network tab. You should have a filter or search field on this tab. Click in here and type Refresh Token to filter the results. You should see only one or two items in the list. Click on one of the Refresh Token items to view its contents. You should be in the Headers area of this item. Scroll through the list until you find Authorization. Next to it, find the text Bearer. 
we're going to be copying the block of text after the word bearer. Now on Firefox, you may need to toggle the switch for raw to view the full token block, then copy the block of text after the word bearer here. Once you have this text copied, open a new blank notepad file and paste the block of text. Save this file as token.txt in an easy to get to area like in the same folder you saved the script in. One important note here is that this token expires after an hour, so if you need to rerun this report, you'll need to refresh the Stream Classic homepage to generate a new token from the developer tools window. Then you would need to replace the original token in token.txt with the updated text. Now we're ready to finally run the script to get our video report. Open your PowerShell command line. You'll need to navigate to the folder where you saved the script earlier, so you'll type cd, then the path to the folder where the script is. Now I'm in my stream folder, and from here I can run the script. The script is going to need to have some information given to it, which is why we spent some time collecting our tenant ID and the stream authorization token. To run the script, I'm going to type dot backslash, then the script file name. In this case, stream classic video report generator underscore v1.11.ps1. I'm going to provide the tenant ID, so I'll type dash AAD tenant ID, then paste in the tenant ID between double quotes. Next, we need to provide the input file parameter, which is the path to the stream token we saved. I'll provide that here since I saved the token.txt file in my stream folder. And finally, we need to tell the script where to save the report using the outdir for out directory parameter. I'll keep things simple, and I'll just save it in this same stream folder. Now I can press enter. The script is running, and since I only have a handful of video files in my demo site, it's pretty quick to finish. The script generated a few files and folders in our directory. The one we're looking for is the stream classic video report folder. Open this and you'll see another folder with a timestamp as its name. Inside this folder is the CSV file. We can open this with Excel and see what we have. This report gives me the video names and other metadata and if I scroll to the right, I can see a column called container. This lets you know what videos are in each container, which is how the stream migration tool will group your videos. Containers can be stream channels, a user's individual video files, or video files from a Microsoft 365 group. You can do a lot of sorting and filtering on this list if you have a lot of videos to work through. One other thing to note is that you might have videos that are listed in multiple channels within Stream, but they will only be listed in one container in this report, and the migration tool to avoid duplicating the videos during migration. If you're more of a visual learner, you might benefit from the sample Power BI dashboard Microsoft has put together to analyze the CSV file we just looked at. This is also a completely optional step, but could be useful if your organization has a lot of video content to migrate. There are two files to download to use the dashboard, Power BI Desktop and a sample dashboard report. Links to these files can be found in the Stream Admin Center by clicking the Review Documentation button. The first step here is to download the Power BI Desktop app. This is a free download and can be found at powerbi.microsoft.com slash desktop. You will also need to open a browser window to the following URL to download the sample Power BI dashboard, aka.ms slash stream classic migration PBI template. This downloads the Power BI template file. Double-click this file to open it in Power BI Desktop. Once the dashboard is opened, you'll be prompted to provide the folder path where the CSV report file is located. This is looking for the Stream Classic Video Report folder, which the script created for us earlier within my Stream folder, so I'll provide that path here. Then select Load and your report will be displayed in a much more visual format than looking at it in the CSV file in Excel. Again, this is a completely optional step, but if your organization's stream portal was heavily used, this would probably be a much easier way to analyze the types of video content you have available to migrate. Now that we know more about the number of containers and videos we're working with, 
we can move on to the migration tool itself. Back in your Microsoft 365 Admin Center, click on Show All, then click All Admin Centers. Scroll down to Stream and click it, then click the Launch Migration Tool button. If you don't see the Launch Migration Tool button immediately, click on the Migration Tool link in the left navigation menu, then click the button. The Migration Tool has some step-by-step -step instructions to help you through the process, but it might not be immediately obvious how you should use this tool, so let's walk through the basic process of what you should be doing to start the migration. I'm going to hide the instructions on this page for now to gain some real estate back, but clicking the Show Tutorial link will bring them back if you need to review them at any time. One other thing to note is that Microsoft has put together some pretty decent documentation for this as well, so you can always check that out if you're interested. You should see some containers already in your overview dashboard. Again, a container is how the migration tool groups videos from stream. If you don't see any containers right away, you'll want to click the Add Containers link in the toolbar. From here, you can have the tool automatically find stream content, specify a single video container, or upload a CSV file containing paths of all the stream containers you want to migrate. For this simple demo, we're just going to let the Stream Migration tool do the work for us, but there is some good documentation here on how you can find the container IDs and paths if you want to explore that route, as well as some CSV file templates to get started. I'm going to click Look for New Containers in Stream. You can see an option here to automatically start scanning containers that are found. Click the Add button to automatically add containers to your scans list. In my demo environment here, you can see that I have already run scans as the scan status is listed as completed. Here is an example of what your environment might look like the first time you open the tool. You'll see the status of the scan status listed as ready to scan. You can also see other information about the number of videos and file size of all the videos in each scanned container. Clicking on one of the containers, but not checking the box to the left, will bring up a panel of information about the selected container. If the scans aren't automatically run, we can start a scan of our containers manually. We can select some or all of the containers that we want to scan. When we've selected at least one container, we get a scan button in the toolbar. Click the scan button, and the tool will begin scanning the containers for videos. You can see the status of each container in the scan status column. When the status is listed as complete, that container is ready to be migrated into SharePoint. The next step is to add the scanned content to our migration list. Select the container or containers you want to migrate, then click the Add to Migration button in the toolbar. You'll get a note about setting the migration paths, which we'll do in just a minute. Go ahead and click Continue. Toward the top of the Migration Tool page, click the Migrations tab to switch over to that page. Here we can see the containers we've added to be migrated. Some containers may have their paths automatically assigned by the tool. For example, containers that were a Microsoft 365 group will map to that group's SharePoint site, and individual users will have their video content mapped to their personal OneDrive. These paths can be changed if you decide you'd rather put these videos in a different location. To edit a path, click on one of the containers in your Containers list on the Migration tab, but don't check the box to the left. This will open an information panel that has the current destination of the video if it's been set. Some videos will list the destination as not assigned. To set or edit a path, click the edit link below the destination. Select whether the video container should be migrated into OneDrive or into SharePoint. Selecting OneDrive will allow you to enter a user's email or name to set the video container's destination to their OneDrive. From here, you can either select or create a folder where the video container will be migrated. Selecting SharePoint prompts you to select a SharePoint site where you want your videos to be migrated. Once you select the site, you will be shown a list of the available document libraries within that site. Select the library where your videos should be moved, or you can create a new library. In this case, I'll go ahead and click Create Library and call my new library Migrated Videos. I'll click on this Create Library button, then scroll down the list of document libraries on this site to find my new Migrated Videos Library and click on it. Within the library, you can create folders if you wish, or select any existing folders if you're using an existing document library. 
This can be useful if you plan on utilizing a single library as a video repository and want to keep your video containers separate. Once you've selected your destination document library or folder, click on Save Path. Repeat this process for any other containers you're migrating. It's also important to understand the folder structure that's created during the migration process. Within the library or folder you select, the migration tool will create a folder called Stream Migrated Videos. Each video container being migrated into the location you select will have a corresponding folder within the Stream Migrated Videos folder. For example, if you migrate two video containers into the same document library, the migration tool will create a single Stream Migrated Videos folder, and within that folder, you'll find separate folders for each of the two containers. Within each of the folders are the actual video files. After all that setup and preparation, we're finally ready to migrate the videos. Select the containers you want to migrate, and click the Migrate button in the toolbar. You'll be presented with an information panel with some important notes. Read these, and when you're ready to begin, click the Migrate button at the bottom of this panel. During the migration process, you'll be able to see the status of each video container under the Status column. Depending on how many video files you'll be migrating, this could take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. You can check the status of the migration by scrolling over to the Migration Status column. You can find other helpful information here, such as the number of successful or failed video migrations. Since I only had a few containers to migrate for this demo, this process didn't take too long, but your mileage may vary depending on the length, file size, and number of videos you're migrating. One other thing to note is that if you are doing your video migration in waves and plan on migrating additional videos to the same location that you already have used, you will want to make sure you do not select the Stream Migrated Video folder as the destination for another round of migrated videos. Otherwise, you'll end up with a Stream Migrated Video folder nested within your original Stream Migrated Videos folder. Instead, just select the original destination document library or your original folder within the document library to avoid this nested folder issue. The migration tool will correctly place the video container folders within the stream migrated video folder, if it already exists. Now that the videos have been migrated, let's take a look at SharePoint to see the video files in their new home. I'm going to open my SharePoint site and navigate to the location where I told the migration tool to put the videos. In this case, I decided to put the videos into a library called Migrated Videos. If I click into this library, you can see the Stream Migrated Videos folder, and opening that up will show me the container names. Within each of these folders, I'll find the video files, which I can now click on, to play directly in the file viewer in SharePoint. And remember, because they're stored in SharePoint, you can treat them like any other file type, which includes the ability to copy and move the videos around to anywhere you need them to be. What about adding a video file to a SharePoint page? Stream Classic gave us a dedicated web part for displaying videos or channels on our pages, but there are no corresponding web parts for Stream on SharePoint. Instead, we can use the Files and Media web part on our page. We simply add the File and Media web part, then in the file picker that opens, we can browse the site, find the library with the videos in it, in this case, migrated videos, open the Stream Migrated Videos folder and browse the containers for the video I want to show. I'll click the video, then click Select. The video will be added to the page. You can use the Video Settings panel to edit the video settings, like choose a thumbnail image, generate a transcription, set chapters, and more. And there you have it. This concludes our overview of the Stream Video Migration Tools. I hope you found this video helpful. It's definitely a uh, cumbersome and somewhat convoluted process to get through, so if you would like some assistance getting your organization's videos out of Stream Classic and into SharePoint, be sure to visit us at pategroup.com, and we'd be happy to assist. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.